And now, you're tuned in to RBLR, the home of Tampa Bay's Reveler Sports. Welcome in to RBLR Sports. My name is Musab, and last week I was all right, but now I'm doing very well. And that's because we survived the bye week, and now it's time for the second half of the season. An opportunity to shine. And speaking of opportunities, I have the opportunity to be talking again with the one and only Stefan. Stefan, how are we doing tonight? Hey, listen, we're doing great. I'm, I'm sipping a little bit of scotch because, hey, we won the bye week without even playing. Yes, we did. It was a rather interesting bye week for sure with all the other games going on, but I'm right there with you, well rested and ready for another week of some Tampa Bay football. I would agree. I would agree. And you know, as we always start our show, Musab, you know, what, what kind of you know what were the things you noticed around the league? You know, that one two sentences. I know we didn't play, but you know, anything that caught your eye. I mean, just the random losses or the the kind of glitches and stuff, you know, like, for example, the Titans-Rams game, or even that super close Steelers-Bears game, and then also, I mean, uh, you can't forget about just uh, as well as Cowboys-Broncos, uh, and then last but not least, the one that really caught my eye, I'm still thinking about it right now just because of who they are, and that's the Bills and the Jaguars. I don't know. Super interesting week. And then even Falcons beating the Saints. I don't know. A lot of mixed emotions. Nothing bad, but just uh, I was kind of just scratching my head Sunday night. I don't know. How are you feeling? Yeah, I agree with you. I, you know, for me, the, the most, you know, I kind of I kind of lean. I try to watch m most of I can, but I was just paying attention to the teams that, you know, kind of matter for, for our seating purposes. So it was awesome to see the Cowboys, Rams, Packers, and Saints all lose. Um, I was a little disappointed that, you know, Arizona was able to pull that off against the 49ers with a backup quarterback. But, hey, we got to be able to control our own destiny. So it is what it is. But all in all, I thought it was a good bye week for our boys and it gave us another chance to, you know, to get healthy. Um, but, but that being said, why don't we kick it off, you know, talking about our standings, you know, um, kind of we wanted to kick off the, this first segment here in standings about have they have the Bucks meet our expectation based on our prediction um, back in the summer when we recorded the pod. Um, Musab, I want to hear what you got. I'll, you know, kind of bring us home after you tell me what, what you had um, in the first eight games after the bye week. What, what, what was the record you had and, and have they met the expectations here? I mean, uh, I only had one loss coming into this bye week. Um, overall, I think I only had two losses overall. Another potential one being later on this season against the Buffalo Bills. But... Have we met the expectations? Uh, not really. No. We're, we're the Super Bowl champions. Uh, you know, we should be firing on all cylinders. I understand things happen or whatever, obviously, with the injuries specifically. But what I really care about is how much are we picking up on, you know, these slips or these silly errors? You know, obviously, for example, the big thing is penalties, penalties, penalties. We were looking amazing against the Bears, but obviously it's the Bears. But then again, now we're running it back with the Saints uh, from last season, and it just looked awful. It was like just when I thought the demon of penalties was gone, it <laughs> came back, Stefan, and it bit us. Well, I'll tell you, it it, it did more than just bit us. Uh, it, it did a lot more than that, and oh, yeah. it hurts. It hurts seeing those kind of things happening over and over again. Uh, overall, I, I, I'm say, I would say I'm happy, but... These these errors or these slips or whatever, it's just sometimes they're just way too costly, Stefan. I'll just leave it at that. They're way too costly at times, and for that reason, uh, I'm going to say maybe, but then I'm going to come out with no. They don't meet my expectations. But what about you? What do you think? All right, so so I'm going to disagree and agree with you. You know, when you talk about the penalties, I, I do agree. I mean, it's it just getting out of hand. Now, disagreeing in the fact that I guess I had a six at two at this point, so I can't say they didn't meet my expectations. They weren't exactly the losses I predicted. I thought we would beat the Saints, um, and we would lose to the Rams and the Dolphins, and we did lose to the Rams, obviously not the Dolphins. Um, but I think all in all, you know, uh, they've, they've meet, met my expectations, I guess. You know, I wasn't counting on our entire secondary being down, and, and you know, so far kind of a down year for Devin White. But you know, six and two Musab, we're still in great position to to get a run and, and try to you know hopefully win the, not only win the division, which is our next topic, but you know maybe obtain that number one that number one seed. So 
I'm I'm cool with the six and two. I can't be too mad when I said we would be six and two at this point. Um, but I, I I knew you would be a little bit upset with that. You know, you you had them at seven one. Either way, I still think we have a good chance, and you know, positive vibes, and we're getting healthy. So no no complaints on this end. So from that, let's move on to you know the the playoff scenario for the Bucks, right? I mean, well, division stand. You know, in the division standing, you know, right now we're we're first. Um, you know, we got a game separation from the Saints thanks to the Falcons. Um, but you know what is crazy, Musab? Out of the the you know the four teams in the division right now, I believe the Saints, the Falcons, and the Bucks would be in the playoffs. So that I was not expecting. Um, the first round matchup for us would be the Saints right now. So so what are your thoughts here? You know, do you still expect us to run away with this division? Are you seeing a little more competition than than we originally expected? I think I think we should be able to run away uh in the division uh now will that actually happen i'm not sure just because uh, you know things like these recurrent penalties and the injuries we've been dealing with but hey we're all well rested uh we're not forcing anything too much on all our, our you know our injured players or anything like that so uh, for that reason uh, i'm very optimistic now you know I, I took this time to kind of reflect on how we did last season and you know we had our ups and downs earlier on that season but oh, yeah. it was also a different year because it was tom brady's first year it was everyone's first year kind of working together but it happens i guess it happens and i am really really gonna kind of be uh not tough on them but i'm really gonna keep an eye out on for everything this upcoming game stefan i mean listen we had a whole week to reflect a whole week to rest a whole week to do everything and second of all with these random wins and losses or these surprising wins and losses uh from other teams in the league this past sunday uh as a buccaneers player i would be really fired up seeing the falcons take down the saints or even seeing the buffalo bills lose it makes you think okay well hey maybe maybe they're not perfect either you know, maybe not, and maybe not everyone's gonna be dominating the whole season, and you know, everyone's gonna have their slips here and there. So I guess it makes me think: Well, when are these things gonna happen again? Is it gonna be on us? Is it gonna be on our opponents? Uh, a lot of questions in the air, but I think there will be some answers this upcoming Sunday. What do you think? No, well, I completely agree with you there. You know, I think it, this bye week. Uh, first of all, you know, when you lose like that before the bye week, it's hard probably to go on a bye week and not think about it because it was a, it was a horrendous loss and that you know against a divisional opponent. Um, and and secondly, when you see teams like the Bills losing to the Jaguars and you see all these crazy scores from last Sunday, you know the Broncos destroying the Cowboys, which we loved. But as a, as a Bucks fan, it means hey, you can't take any of these teams for granted. You know, those guys get paid too. Um, and they're professionals for a reason. So we better be ready. And we saw what Tyler Heineke did to us last year. So, you know, we, we better be ready for him. And, and yeah, I, I expect a way better performance this week. Um, but, you know, that being said, you know, I think we both feel like we, we, we'll be running away with this division in, in the long run. Um, mainly, you know, we hope Jameis is okay, but the Saints, you know, have to figure out a quarterback. But, hey, the Falcons are warming up. I know we beat them already, but we still got another game with them. We'll see how that rolls. But, um, let's move into the conference standings. Um, so we got, you know, we're third. Um, there's two teams ahead of us, the Cardinals and the Packers. So we're gonna do a, we're gonna kind of hear a fun seeding game. Um, Musab, I'll probably read off to you, you know, the Arizona Cardinals' remaining schedule. Um, you'll tell me the losses or wins and, and what their record would be towards the end. And we'll do the same with the Packers and the Bucks. And we'll kind of see, you know, what you predicted where the Bucks will land and where I think the Bucks will land. So. Currently, the Cardinals are 8-1. Um, they're going to play the Panthers. They got left. The Panthers, the Seahawks, the Bears, the Rams, the Lions, the Colts, the Cowboys, and the Seahawks. What do you see here? You know, put Any potential losses? Will they win out? What are your thoughts here for the Cardinals? Yeah, I mean, potential losses I just see are you know, from like the Rams. Uh, honestly, even maybe I could see a game where it's either uh, the Colts or the Cowboys. But other than that, though, um, based on how they've been playing, I don't see too much uh, of a threat from the other teams on their schedule uh, slash what the other teams are dealing with. Uh, for example, you know, like the Seahawks or even the Bears or even the Lions, they haven't been looking too hot overall. So for that reason, um, unfortunately, I think they're they're going to continue to dominate. Uh, they got a nice roster. You know, they got a lot of good players, a lot of potential, and... You know, this could be a hit or miss, but obviously I think it's going to be more of a hit. Um, the only real threat I see is probably the Rams. 
Uh, and I know they're probably real, real fired up after that tough loss. So I don't think they're trying to really give any more easy losses away or even tough losses away at all. Uh, I don't see much standing in front of the Arizona Cardinals, Stefan. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, so so I guess you would have them what like fourteen and three, um, or yeah. you know, two potential losses. Yeah, okay. That, I would, that makes... I would probably say f- fifteen and two uh, if okay. they if they've been playing like they have been. But uh, you know things pop up here and there. I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out to be fourteen or three. Okay, so yeah, fifteen. That's fair. I mean, I think they have sort of an easy schedule. You know, I, I may have some differences here than than you. I think I, I think we can both agree the Rams game could be one of them. Um, I do think they might drop one of the two Seahawks games because R- Russell Wilson is coming back this week, um, and you know they Seattle's in that hunt where they're going to have to win one, you know, one or the other. So we'll see how that goes. But also, you know, what you said earlier, I had you know Colts or Cowboys. Is, those are not easy games either. So if I would just have to, you know, predicting and th- throw away some numbers out there, I would probably say they would lose to the Rams. Um, the Colts or the Cowboys, so either one, there would be two more losses, which would, and then I would give them, they're going to lose one to the Seahawks, so I would give them losing four games. And and one of the main reasons is uh, that they don't know, you know, Kyle Murray, you know, they, they, they're not sure about him. You know, um, DeAndre Hopkins has big hamstring problems, apparently, so, you know, I know they're loaded, but, and then they lost J.J. Watt, JJ Watt, so, you know, they, they got some things that they're dealing with as well, so, and I don't think they have the easiest – and they, they do have an easy schedule coming up. But, you know, the Rams, the Colts, Cowboys, Seahawks to end the year is, is not a cakewalk in my opinion. So I, I have them going 13-4 and four, uh, on the way down. Any thoughts there? I mean, I think it makes sense. There's there's a lot going on this upcoming or even during the season so far, Steph. And, you know, uh, from the top of my head, I think maybe – the the Cardinals are the only team that everyone's really like, oh, wow, okay, this team's like winning, winning. You know, all the yeah. other teams, you know, they have these random little dingers, tweaks, whatever you want to call it. And that's why it's not like, you know, there's not that one team really, really standing out or even one or two teams really, really standing out from the top of my head that I can think of. So that's why, I mean, I can I can go with it. I'm right there with you, Stefan. I wouldn't be surprised if, honestly, anything happens with a team like the Cardinals or, you know, all the other teams that are up there right now. But uh, that's, yeah, I'm still going to have to probably go. I'm going to go probably, uh, I'm going to stick with that 15 and two more realistically, okay. probably 14 and three. Uh, but again, you never know, Stefan, it's football. Things happen, specifically injuries, which can really, really bite you in the butt uh, oh, yeah. as they, as they have been to our bucks here and there. But yeah, that's about it. All right. I agree. So you got them. Uh, you know, f- either fifteen and two or fourteen and three. I got them thirteen and four. So we'll revisit here as we go down uh, the next team. So the Packers, um, they still have to play Seattle. They're not sure if Aaron Rodgers is going to play this Sunday, and, and Russell Wilson is going to be back. Then they got the Vikings, which is a divisional game. They got the Rams. They got the Bears, Ravens, Browns in a row. Then the Vikings and the Lions to finish up the year. So, any thoughts here, Musab? Any potential losses? And again, I'll repeat: they're seven and two. So the Bucks are really, you know, behind half a game technically because they played more games than we have. Um, but what do you see about the Packers here going down this the stretch? Uh, I think they're that little Ravens, Browns, Vikings stretch is is going to get to them. Uh, the what you said uh, with the Seahawks and the Cardinals is kind of how I actually feel with the Vikings and Packers, just because they be playing twice as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I think yeah, I think one of their losses is going to be with the Vikings. Uh, Vikings is a pretty hot team. They got some. They got some good dudes out there. Uh, and then I mean, listen, you got Rams. Then you have the Bears. Who I mean, uh, I mean, obviously they weren't a threat to us, but I don't know. You know what? Yeah, good defense. Exactly. Exactly. And then the Ravens and Browns. That's that's the real test for them. Oh, yeah. I, I think. Would've... I think. I think one loss is going to be given. I wouldn't even be surprised if they lost back to back. You know, if things kind of start falling into shambles and all that. Uh, so for that reason, I I got them I got them down as thirteen, or actually no, I got them down as twelve and five. Ooh, you, wow! I like that. Yeah, I, I got them thirteen and four, and mainly for the some of the reasons you said. But I got them losing to the Seahawks if, if Ross comes back and Rodgers does, and I still think the Seahawks. You know, they need some wins. They're struggling, so they're, they're going to be firing all cylinders. 
I do have them beating the Rams. Um, and then I, I have another L with the Ravens. To your point, I, I could have done Ravens or Browns. I feel like that's just a tough stretch for them, especially you got to play the Ravens and Browns back to back. And then you got another di divisional opponent in the Vikings, you know, in that playoff hunt there later in the year. So I got them 13 and four. So we're, we're kind of on the same boat there. We, we feel more, I guess, a little more negative um, on the Packers than we do on, on Arizona. So moving down here, let's go to our Bucks. So I'll read them off again, and, and, and let's see what we got with the Bucks. So we got Washington coming up this week, and we, then we got the Giants, Colts, Falcons, Bills, Saints, Panthers, Jets, Panthers. So what do you got for the rest of the year, Mr. Musab? Uh, I'm feeling very optimistic. Ideally, I only see the Bills really giving us a hard time. I think there's going to be some other close games where it's like, okay, well, hey, I'll take the win, but uh, not the game that I was expecting. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if that's that means we're going uh, against the Saints. Uh, I don't think the Panthers, just because we played them twice, like the other teams that we were talking about earlier, I, <laughs> both of those are going to be wins. I'm very optimistic with that. But uh, I, I, see, I see a potential loss with the Colts. And I only say that just because, uh, I don't know, I feel like the Colts may get a little bit fired up as well. You got a great uh, defense. Exactly, great defense. exactly. And I, I think, that, listen, they have potential, okay? Uh, it's going to be a game uh, a lot closer than most people think it will turn out to be. And second of all, you know, I also want to say overall, now that we're talking about our Bucks, is that... Uh, uh, game by game, I also think that the mentality of these kind of teams, we're talking about Bucks, Packers, Cardinals, it can change, and it can change for their opponents. If their opponents are looking real hot and now they're really, really fired up, now they're really, really motivated, you know, just imagine if you're on the Jets, Stefan, and you're playing, I don't know, like the Bills or the Cardinals, uh, right now you'd be like, oh gosh, this ought to be good. But now just imagine if the Jets have been winning every game before they played the Bills or the Cardinals. They're like, OMG, we're actually kind of looking real good. You know, maybe we can actually put up a dog fight, you know? It's going to turn out fight. to be... Exactly. It's, it's going to turn out to be more of a mental game as we go out, uh, you know, later on this season. Which uh, I don't think is going to be an issue for us, maybe with the Saints. I think there might be a close game with the Panthers if we just kind of start sagging off. But... That's all I really see. It's uh, a potential Colts loss. Uh, I think the Bills Saints is going to be a tough kind of little back-to-back -back week. Uh, unfortunately, I do see an L coming from one of those games. And then uh, a close game with the, one of those Panthers matches. But other than that, though, uh, it's not going to be a walk in the park exactly. But I don't think we're going to have any huge issues. Or I don't think we're going to have too much to be picking out on. Uh, for the Bucks uh, week by week, but I don't know. What do you think? But oh, I will say though. I mean, for that reason, I'm I'm gonna have to go. What? Yeah, thirteen and four. Um, okay, so I, you I would think, have recap uh, your standings. You would have what between Arizona Packers and Bucks? You would have the Bucks as the second seed. Yeah, I got Bucks at the second seed right now, and uh, I think I think it's uh, this second half of the season is gonna be a whole game changer. I think a loss like that really, really pissed off Arians and also our leader, Tom Brady. And I mean, everyone else, though, overall. But I mean, you know, it's it just reaches a point where it's like, listen, you know, you, you have the best of the best. You have the talent. Why can't we execute it? So I'm thinking, well, now you have a whole seven days off in the office to think about these things. I hope you have a nice game plan ready. And uh, that means every single one of those people on the team, the coaching staff, everyone in the office, uh, there should be no more excuses. Now, you know, natural mistakes are going to pop up, but overall, uh, it's time to really start, you know, or it's time to really stop messing around. Yeah, so... So I, I'm going to disagree here, Musal, I got, but I, I agree with one of your losses. I do think um, the Colts is a potential loss, but I do have us beating the Bills, especially after last week. It gives me a little, you know, I just feel like it's either the Bills or the Colts. I don't see us losing to the Saints again. It's not going to happen. There's no chance it's going to happen. Just, it, this can't happen. It, it's not going to, Tom Brady's not going to lose to a divisional opponent twice, two back-to-back -back years. Not happening. I'm not losing to the Saints. I do agree one of the Panthers games could be close, um, but I got us losing to the Colts and beating the Bills and then winning everything else. So I'm going to go. I'm going to stick to my prediction from the start of the year. I'm going to go 14-3. and three. 
So that would put the Bucks as the number one seed, in my opinion. You would have the Packers at 13 and four, and then you would have the I would have the Cardinals at 13 and four. So we would be one game ahead and, and host a home game, in my opinion. Anything to to say there? Remember that this year only the the number one seed gets the, that first round by. Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, Stefan, I I hate to be that kind of party pooper, but I am tired of these optimism that i've been having with myself when it comes to the <laughs> saints and the buccaneers matchup uh that last game just really kind of got to me and uh, i think if we do win it's going to be a close game i don't think it's going to be a walk in the park at all whether tom brady and the rest of the boys are real fired up i know the saints are coming after us I w i'll tell you this Stefan. everyone's coming after us because you know we have tom brady when you got brady on the team everyone's coming after you because it's a statement when when you beat the Super Bowl champs, when you beat Tom Brady, uh, and especially when it's not like he's doing really bad, it's just you know you just dominate overall. Uh, then it it changes the vibes, it changes a lot of things, and that's why I think um, I I wouldn't be surprised if we lost again to the Saints. Now is it uh, is it, it's going to be tough, but uh, if we do run run it back again with them in the playoffs, uh, then uh, we'll win for sure. But it's an interesting game. I don't know. I, I have respect for the Saints, but I also have these random uh, worries that are going to pop up when the time comes that we play them again. And uh, I don't know. With, with what we have right now, uh, it's tough, Stefan. It's feeling tough. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we were talking about the expectations, and, uh, you know, they didn't meet my expectations. Not in a bad way like that, but... Things are just going to happen with, with what we're dealing right now, especially the injuries, Stefan. It's just, this could really bite us or it could not. Maybe the backups really, really step it up. You know, it, it was times, it was around this time when Aaron Stinney actually kind of stepped up to the plate. And uh, yeah. I remember he, he, he did a really solid job. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe we just needed a break. And now it's time to really just fire on all cylinders this second half of the season. And Mus just remember this, Musab. We're, we're debating if they'll be first or second in the NFC. These are great times to be a Bucks fan. So hey, it could always be worse. We can be back in you know where we've been for a long, long time. So that being said, you know first or second, Musab. I think we both would be pretty happy. We'd be hosting a home game. Obviously, we would love that buy. But you know we we put ourselves in a hole losing that Saints game, no doubt. Um, it could always be worse if we didn't have a mascot. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so. You know, let's move on here to to, to kind of our, to wrap up here on um, this segment. Uh, our biggest question marks after the bye week, and you know, I'll throw some at you that I think I have, and and I just want to get your feedback here. You know, I'm gonna start with the easiest one is the penalties. I think we both can agree. You know, there's way way too many. I mean, we can't continue to have these, especially in big games. They're just gonna bite us, which they did versus the Saints. I mean, they did. Um, it can't happen against the Bills. It can't happen against the Colts. You know, it can't happen against anyone, really. I mean, the, the amount we're getting is too much. Um, the second one would probably, you know, for me, the, the you know, the hurt sec the secondary, right? I mean, it's a question mark because we still don't have Carlton, but it looks like Sh Sean Murphy Bunting's going to be a go for this week. And listen, I like my chances there with Sherman, Dean, and, and Bunting, and Cockrell being the fourth dude if, if Davis is out. Um, but I would love to see Davis come before the year, you know, year's over. Um, and then before I pass it to you so I can get some feedback on these three, you know, it's got to be Devin White, man. We both had higher expectations for him. But I, I, I think we'll see after this bye week, you know, the Devin White we saw in the playoffs. I, I read, you know, an article that even Levante, you know, he said in his press conference, he had, he had a, you know, personal talk with Devin about the, you know, about the penalties and, and, and how he's been playing, you know. So I'm hoping that, you know, this week's, this man up and, and we and we can get the ball rolling because i mean he is a talent we all saw it but i don't i just don't know where it's gone this far in musab so i'll leave you with those three um you know you can start penalties hurt secondary Devin, wherever you want to start and uh just want to hear you, what you what do you have to say about these well in regards to the penalties and Devin white but i'll talk about penalties overall i mean we, we got to stop messing around when it, when it comes to those silly penalties you know it's one thing if you you kind of get like a a very uh, interesting kind of pass interference call or some controversial call like that. But, I mean, when you're just kind of roughing the passer over and over again or offsides, <laughs> this and that, it's just like, listen, 
it, it, it's cute if it happens once or whatever that's it's natural that's part of the game but when it happens over and over again especially when you're going against a good team or a team that's you know kind of you know fighting back with you then it's just like well when are you going to learn when are you going to learn and you know what Stefan I I I got a lot of love and respect for Devin White. Obviously, he was my defensive player of the year candidate. Still is. I think the second half is going to be a different ballpark for him because I say that. Why, Stefan? Because uh, he got a pretty hefty fine for all those yeah, penalties and everything. I forgot. How, uh, I don't know if you remember exactly how much it was, but uh, listen, I know the guy makes a lot of money, but obviously, you know, kind of just paying a rookie kind of, contract. Though. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, pay, look, paying out of pocket like that, uh, it. Sometimes, Steph, you know, I just say that sometimes, Stefan, you just have to learn the hard way and not, not just the hard, the hard, hard way. It's you, you, you finish off the first half with, with a tough loss. Now you're being penalized for all these silly mistakes you keep on making over and over again. Overall, you know, the secondary ain't looking hot. So, you know, as someone who's already been dominant, you know, who knows what he needs to do. Yeah, you know, I know you're not perfect, but he knows what he needs to do and he's not doing it oh uh, he's still doing a fairly decent job but overall uh i was expecting better from him and i'm hoping that the second half of the season uh it's a game changer it's a different kind of ball game for him and the rest of our guys but moving on to this the third secondary um that's just that's just it just comes down to praying for the best slash how much time and effort are these backup secondary players putting in on and off the field, the tape, just everything, the chemistry. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe maybe we have the physicality, we have the vision, but it's just the, the team chemistry, picking up on, oh, snap, oh, you know what, how about let's switch, or how about, hey, you know, uh, look for this coverage or whatever. Hey, you know what, maybe have my back uh, during those kind of plays, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe the chemistry isn't there just because of, you know, guys coming in and out. I just want to know, you know, with the Hurts secondary and Devin White not exactly – meeting the expectations at least for me or not just completely dominating like he's the defensive player of the year candidate uh who's maybe who's another guy you you got you got high hopes for slash you really really want to make sure okay well you know he can kind of pick up on these kind of errors slash continue to dominate i'm gonna go with my, my prediction from earlier in the year remember i, I had my boy jamel dean having a, a breakout year um, I, I, th I, I think he is having it. I think even Pro Football Focus has him up, up there and, you know, in corners. I just want to see, I just want to see it's not a fluke, Musab. I want to, I want to see it continue to happen the rest of the year. Um, cause we need it, right? We definitely need it in this area. So that, that would be my guy. I don't know if you disagree or agree there, but that, that's someone to pay attention as, you know, as these guys like Bunting and Sherman come back, you know, is Dean going to keep that same level or are you going to, you know, kind of lean back and say, well, I got th these guys back, you know, so I don't really have to, but I mean, I would love for him to keep playing how he is. I'm I'm with you, but also not with you when it comes to that because uh, I'm thinking more about the D line. When what I was kind of uh, what I was kind of hoping for, at least from the the D line or any of those guys, is that um, I'm kind of looking at that situation where uh, you, if you remember when we played the Bears, where you know Fields is just about to get sacked and he kind of just chucks it up in the air, and then who snags the interception? Pierre Desir. Uh, nothing against Pierre Desir, but I'm kind of hoping that someone like Shaq Barrett or Vita Vea just really dominates to the point where, like, the quarterback's like, oh, snap, like, I got I got to get rid of the ball. And then because of that, uh, you know, either they don't execute the play or we get the interception or fumble or something like that. So that's what I was uh, That's what I was kind of thinking is, you know. Um, that's fair. I think Shaq's had a good year. Though. He hasn't had a monster year like that one year, but he has had a good year. Maybe like we've always spoken, you know, Vito Bay is good against the run, but would love to see him get more few sacks, you know? That's what I'm thinking. And even also Joe Tryon. I guess all those three guys, um, just because Tryon's been getting a lot of action. I think he's been getting a lot more action than anyone thought. And if you're going to be getting this much action, uh, I want to see a little more damage on the field. So uh, I guess that's really about it. I mean, uh, I, I think all the guys can really step it up overall. They're all doing a solid job. Great job overall. Shout out to Shaq Bear definitely for dominating when it comes to the sacks. They don't call him Shaq Bear for no reason, but... That's what I'm kind of hoping for is now I, I really want this D-line to really pressure the quarterbacks, you know, to the point where it's like, okay, hey, um, maybe our DBs aren't the hottest. They don't have division like our starters or overall execution, but they will have these opportunities to, to stop something. 
I agree. I, you know, listen, the, the better the deep the D line plays, the better it will be for you know for the for the problems we're having in the secondary, right? Because the quarterback holds the ball, ball less. So, you know, listen, I, I agree. I don't think we're still playing at that level we were playing in the playoffs. So great point. I would love to see it. You know, like where is that D line domination that we saw throughout the playoffs? You know, like the, the D line we saw versus Rogers twice last year, you know, like where is that at? You know, and, and some things have to do, you know, JPP has a bum shoulder. Um, and he even admitted that you know, it really hurts. It doesn't seem like he's going to practice for the rest of the year. He's just going to just show up to the games. So for that being said, maybe give Joe Tryon more opportunities. That's a fair point too, Musab, you know. Um, but, you know, that, that wraps kind of our, our bye week segment. Um, a lot of positives, way more positives than, than the last week. So love seeing that. Um, and as we wrap it up, let's hear your RBLR moment for last. For you know, it was a bye week; we didn't play, but I'm sure there's some things that made you happy. I mean, yeah, what what made me happy was you know um, the Bills' loss, like the Bucks. Uh, you know, we've had some weird times, uh, especially like you know, like last year where we lost the Bears, and everyone's thinking, "OMG, what the heck was that?" So. That was kind of like the, the game for the Jaguars. Like, okay, hey, we beat the Bills, and everyone's thinking, at least on the Bills' side, like, OMG, what the heck was that? And as someone who is coming after the Bills slash, you know, trying to, you know, get ready for them, uh, a Bills loss is nice to see. It's another loss on their record, and overall it kind of puts them down a little bit. But then again, Stefan, I'm also thinking, I mean, they must be really kind of furious after a loss like that but that was my rblr moment uh not a loss that that was the loss i was not expecting at all at all and the fact that it happened like that uh i was just thinking to myself wow what an interesting bye week for sure you know uh a lot of games going on overall a lot of entertainment uh and but that bill's loss was like okay Mm, this is this is an interesting Stefan, I gotta say this is an interesting year for oh, for yeah. sure so far when it comes to these kind of losses, these random losses here and there everywhere. Um, it, it was gonna be like that for uh, for us uh, if we lost to the Patriots if Nick Folk made that field goal, I'd be feeling the same way as the bills are right now. but it's been an interesting season so far, definitely an interesting weekend and Kind of nice to see as a Buccaneers fan on bye week that uh, we had a little bit of entertainment. Oh, I agree. Listen, my, my, I completely agree that 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 Bills loss was definitely shocking, and especially against the Jaguars. We know that you know the mess they've been having to deal with from the coach to, to a bunch of stuff. So that that was a good one. But I'm gonna go with the uh, the Rams losing. What happened to Sean McVay? Musab, no dancing this week. No running on all the. I guess sideline? not. <laughs> you forgot that you don't win the Super Bowl in week three, huh? Um, so that was good for me because I feel like, you know, I, I really dislike him. I, I think he's a, he's kind of a show off. He reminds me of Sean Payton. I, I, I think he's a great coach. I just, you know, he doesn't coach our squad, so it's hard for me to root for him. Um, I, I like Matt Stafford generally, but I just don't trust him that much. And he turned into that kind of Matt Stafford Lions Stafford, you know, that, that one interception in the end zone where he just kind of threw it almost like Jameis esque. It was very shocking. So I was, I really enjoyed that. And, and all in all, you know, the rest of the NFC teams lost except the Cardinals. So that also made me really happy. So it was, it was a great, uh, great bye week for the Bucks. That's for sure. And I just, um, just to add on to that, I also want to say that, you know, these kind of things, uh, the Rams lost, the Bills lost. It just reminds you that, you know, no matter how hot you, how hot you start the season, no matter how hot you, you are feeling for a week or two or three, uh, anything can happen. It happened last year. I remember my buddy, he's a huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan. And towards the end of the season, they faced a lot of random obstacles, which gave him some losses. So uh, seeing that from other teams uh, it keeps me a little optimistic that, hey, we're not the only one who's dealing with these battles. There's a lot of teams out there who are just as good as us, maybe technically better at the moment, but uh, they're they're in for a fight as well. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, it's, if you don't get ready, you you know, like I said earlier, you know, these dudes, all of them get paid. They're it's insanely good. That's why they're in the league. So every, every any given Sunday, you know. Um, moving on into into our next segment as we prep for the Washington football team this week, let's go over some injuries uh, and some signings. Um. Let's start with some injuries, Musab. You know, Scooter and uh, Sean Murphy Bunting look like they will be back. 
um, this week based on you know some of the press conferences I've heard from Bruce and and them even they spoke today to the media that they seem very positive that they're going to be able to go. Um, again, I wouldn't force any of them. I would love to have Sean Murphy Bunting before Scooter. Love Scooter, but we do need the help in the back end. So it'd be nice to see you know both of these guys. Um, AB and Gronk. It doesn't seem as likely, Musab. Um, AB still in a boot. Um, we signed Brashard Perryman, and to me, that's kind of like an indicator that you know AB is not that close to being back. I like Tyler Johnson, so not not too worried, especially if Scooter plays as well. Um, and then the most shocking, Musab, and, and then I'll let you kind of give your thoughts on all these, but the most shocking to me is Galwin being on the, being questionable, I said today, for a foot in, injury, which I don't understand what, when he got it, that we didn't play last week, uh, maybe at practice this week, but um, he's questionable for Sunday, which that would definitely be a big loss. Absolutely. You know, you know what happened last year against Taylor Heineke and the rest of the Washington football team? Uh, we had some random slips. They kind of got to us here and there when it came to our defense. So it makes me think, well, if that happens again, then we really need the offense to be looking hot and knowing, well, AB, you know, AB's out, Gronk's you know, definitely not looking likely to play at all as well. And then with Godwin and his questionable foot injury, uh, it, it puts a lot of, you know, mystery marks up there and it puts a little more uh, worry slash concern in my head. Because these guys are needed. These guys are needed. But maybe this is the time for our backups to step up to the plate slash. Maybe we can kind of, uh, you know, put a little more emphasis on the run game. We're going to have to work with what we have. And uh, one side of me is not extremely worried because it is the Washington football team. But then again, our most interesting games this season so far have been against these backup second stringers uh, the games that you really didn't think were going to be like like that so i don't know it, it, there's a lot of questions in my head and uh um overall I'm just hoping for the best it's I'm, I'm feeling good about scooter and murphy bunting you know coming back as soon as they can uh but i don't know i feel like you know guys are coming in and out in and out in and out I'm yeah, just thinking, well, thing, Stefan, yeah. when is this little in and out going to stop? You know, at least uh, the good part is, uh, as of right now, nothing is, uh, ain't anybody got a season ending injury as of right now. Right. Yeah. So that's good. But it, it's also making me think, well, hey, okay, sure, we'll save you for the playoffs or later on this season, but we have to survive without you right now. And uh, that's, that's my question is, um, how much are we going to be able to survive? Yeah, but that, you know, that's, that's a hard thing. Right? But, hey, a, a lot of the NFL, you know, the, the big NFC teams are dealing with, you know, Rodgers being out with COVID, um, Kyle Murray, you know, questionable, DeAndre Hopkins with his hamstring. So, you know, we saw what happened in Dak Prescott, uh, you know, also with, a, I believe it was a calf strain. So, like, all, all these tier, you know, top tier, tiers in the NFC, you know, even if you want to throw the Saints in there, um, it seems like the only one that really is not having to deal with this is the Rams so far, you know, and obviously we don't pray injury on anyone, but it seems like they're the only kind of sort of most healthiest in the NFC. But, hey, not, to your point, none of them are season ending, so hopefully we can, you know, kind of mesh here down these last few games. Maybe the last six, five games, we kind of have the whole squad back, and that would be beautiful to watch, and we get that continuity as we move into the playoffs. Um but that being said, let, let's talk about the preview. You know, we got the Washington football team. We're going there. Um, I want to start with, you know, the Bucks are a nine-and-a-half-point favorite. Um, the weather and forecast looks good. It doesn't look like it's going to be extremely cold. The, we, we know how that's <laughs> – the Bucks have dealt with that in the past. Um, it looks like it'll be a sunny day there in the 50s, so we should be all right. Uh, my main question for you, Musab, and then this is one that I hope that you have a quick answer because it really bothers me to even have to ask this, but we know what I'm going to ask. Is Tyler Heineke really going to torch us again? On the stat sheet, he shouldn't. But in reality, uh, I hope not. I don't think he's going to be able to torch us like last year. I think he's definitely going to have these opportunities where he's going to be looking real hot. I mean, this guy's got a lot more experience now under his belt. Uh, he's the leader now uh, instead of last year where it was kind of like, you know, they kind of just threw him uh, into the circle and he, you know, had to make the best out of it. And he did pretty solid. But now that's what I'm thinking is this guy's got some experience now 
it kind of reminds me a little bit of like uh teddy bridgewater you know kind of yeah. someone in the shadows in the past and then boom out of nowhere uh the spotlight's on him now and you know he, he, changing the gears turning it up looking good but uh you know listen uh it it, it just comes down to who they've played in the past i mean oh, they're two and six for a reason overall uh they ain't too hot not able to execute too much i mean heineke isn't perfect uh nor do i think he's gonna have a, any kind of perfect s game against us but i think there will be times that uh we're gonna slip here and there naturally but i don't think i don't think it's gonna happen like last year not at all i agree listen we have film on this guy now he's played a bunch of games Plus, I think that we'll get a, the best version of Devin White after this bye week, and I think we're going to shut him down. I think the, the, the last game was a wake-up call for the Bucs. They saw what happened around the league. This guy torched us last year at the playoff game, so it's, it's not happening again, in my opinion. I'm pretty positive that Todd Bowles will be ready for him. Um, so I'm going with there's no, no chance this guy torches us again like that. I mean, they'll be able to move the ball here and there because, I mean, it's, impo- it's really hard to keep a, you know, a team at zero in the NFL, but... I just don't see it like it happened in the playoff game. So I, I think we both can agree on that one. Um, Listen, but they do have some weapons on the offensive side of the football. You know, they got Antonio Gibson, Terry McLaurin, J.D. McKissick. And we all know Adam Humphreys can do some damage in that slot. Um, You know, for the most part, Musab, these players are talented, um, especially Terry and Antonio. Uh, and those are the only two guys that, uh, that kind of scare me. But I do like our odds at stopping the run because we're a good running, you know, defense, even though we struggled in the last two weeks a little bit. Um, and, and if Sean Murphy Bunting plays, you know, and Sherman and Dean and Cockrell, I like our odds, at, 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 you know, covering uh, McL- McLaurin since it's, you know, it's only one and we got four dudes. The other guys, the other dudes are all right, but it don't scare me as much as that guy. Um, so your thoughts, you know, kind of on the offensive weapons and, and what do you expect uh, of our defense against their offensive weapons? I think their offensive weapons are they're good slash satisfactory. Some of them, um, I just think that listen, there's a it, I mean, listen, Stephen. It comes down to a point where there's there's gonna be some dudes, no matter what team you're on, that are gonna have to step up, or at least on the stat sheet, they look really good. And I I think that's kind of like the Washington football team. I mean, you can't have a bunch of good kind of people and then still end up being two and six, especially when your schedule is not super super hard. So. Uh, that kind of just leads me to say, I mean, Shaquille Griffin, I was actually kind of, you know, reading about, about this preview and stuff like that. And Shaquille Griffin himself said, he goes, you know, I was looking on their sideline and, you know, one thing I noticed is, you know, they didn't have the same kind of energy as us. And uh, I think that's what it is. You know, maybe, maybe that's what kind of got to us against the Rams is this, this energy that McVeigh and the rest of those guys are just shoving down our throats. Maybe that's what we need to do to ensure we win. Maybe that's what we need to do to ensure that Taylor Heineke and the rest of the boys don't, you know, torch us. But, you know, I don't like to go too deep in the stats, but the stat comparison between the Washington football team and the Buccaneers, it's like comparing the ground to the sky is the way I see it, honestly. Uh, their, our, their opponent ranking for us is 27, uh, and... You know, they really don't kind of have too much of a of touchdowns or overall uh, interceptions, all that stuff compared to us. We've been overall looking very dominant. I guess, you know, listen, we have a different schedule than them, but it's a second half now. We know our history and it just comes down to this where it's like, listen, our defense was definitely definitely not looking hot at all against the Saints. So are we going to let that happen again, especially against uh, a team we played last year in the playoffs where we had our ups and downs, we had our scares here and there. It just it just comes down to this, Stefan. How much are we going to keep letting these kind of things happen? And uh, I hope this week or this past bye week, uh, we're burying all those silly mistakes, silly errors into the grave and never digging them out again. We're leaving them there, and we're moving on, and that's how I see it. Uh, I got a lot of respect for those kind of players. You know, we're talking Gibson, McLaurin, even Adam Humphreys, but um, I don't know. Listen, they're going to make things happen, Stefan, just because that's part of the game. You know, it's not like we're going to be shutting them down, especially their wide receiver unit, you know, in our DB unit. there's It's going to be a dogfight, I think. I don't think they're going to... 
uh, dominate us at all. I don't think there's any potential to dominate us, but there's going to be slips. There's going to be uh, potential opportunities for them to score, whatever, make the best out of it. But at the end of the day, uh, I don't see it really happening too much. This is when it's going to be really important for our D-line to be coming at Taylor Heineke more than ever, harder than ever, stronger than ever, just more aggressive than ever. All right? Yeah. We, 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 we have to be playing aggressive slash clean, especially clean, because uh, I, I feel like the mistakes we made against the Saints in week what, week eight, uh, they can if they happen like that again, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a really close game or if the Washington football team somehow ends up winning this game. Uh, but then again, I don't see that happening. I mean, especially with those last two minutes from the Saints game, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, Tom Brady is not just any kind of player. I think this guy is in his own level. And when you're Tom Brady, you're going to do whatever it takes to make sure that you and the rest of your team are never going to be, you know, making those silly errors again. They're going to pop up, but you, you got to be holding these guys accountable. I'm sure he is. I'm sure the coaching staff is, but... I honestly, I, I'm really praying that Tom Brady just kind of chewed everyone out in the locker room after that game, or someone chewed everyone out. I don't know who, but it, it don't matter, honestly. Even if it was Pierre Desir chewing everyone out, I wouldn't mind that. But on the real, though, um, I, I think this was that last game we had, it was a wake up call, and I was very thankful to have a nice uh, a little bye week, rest week, especially with our injured players. Now it's time to just give it our all. Blood, sweat, and tears is all I want to be seeing now, Stefan. I agree. Um, you know, and, and let's move to the def their defensive side of the ball, Musab. Um, I, I think they have what is considered the elite defensive line. Uh, it includes Chase Young and Montez Sweat. Um, we're kind of catching a break. It looks like Montez Sweat is going to be doubtful. Um, but I still think our O line is going to have a really going to have to have a really good game because th that is a good defensive line regardless, especially when you have a guy like Chase Young. Um, their secondary has really struggled though, Musab this year. Um, they are the sixth worst team versus the pass in the NFL, and we know what our offense can do. So I, you know, again, as long as our our, our, our O line can contain them, I think we'll light them up. Um, so so what do you think? I'm right there with you, and. Uh... Not trying to be mean, but yeah, I hope Montez Sweat isn't looking too hot as he has been in the past. Uh, yeah, a little bit scared about Chase Young, but also uh, Cole Holcomb or Holcomb, uh, their linebacker as well. Uh, he's he been play. having a pretty, pretty solid season for sure. I mean, he's their leader in tackles, and uh, I don't know, he could be a potential threat. Things and might just play. pop up where it's like, you know, someone like Cole Hol Holcomb or Holcomb come out of nowhere and they randomly dominate us or maybe they really come in clutch for those th you know those third down plays where we really need to get that first down but nope someone like him stops us or someone like him and chase young and the rest of the guys stop us i think their defense is definitely a bigger worry than their offense and mm -hmm. uh and and then also with what we're dealing with right now especially with the questionable foot injury that godwin has right now I'm wondering how this is going to really turn out to be. Uh, I got my eyes out on uh, our offense versus their defense is the big battle. Um, just because we already know the secondary has been an issue. But right now, I'm thinking this little thing called our wide receivers has popped up out of nowhere in our little issue box. Um, not that it's a huge, huge one, but... It's a random concern. worry. It's yeah, a random it's a worry. And uh, even, you know, with someone like Gronk out, I love Gronk. I, seeing what he was been able to do so far in the past, you know, whether that means last year and even earlier this season, we need a guy like him for sure, especially for those red zone, you know, opportunities. And the fact that he's out as well, I don't know what's going to happen because what I'm thinking is if Cole Holcomb and Chase Young are looking real hot and the rest of the guys are too, and now we're in the red zone. I mean, how many times are we going to execute efficiently? How many times are they going to stop us and we're just going to have to get the field goal? But, you know, I, I will say this, though. I, I really don't think that they have any chance of winning against us because we're going to be trying to rack up points in every way possible. So uh, it's not a huge, huge concern. But I think I wouldn't be surprised if there's a slow start for our Buccaneers 
as that's been happening a lot in the past. Hey, there shouldn't be a, a, a slow start after a bye week. I'm going to be salty, Musa. Well, you'll be getting some texts if, it, if, it, if, we, if we have a slow start. Um, move, moving into, you know, kind of a, our last segments here for this game. Um, let, let's uh, start with um, game predictions and then we'll throw, uh, throw out our Mr. Fantasy for the week. So what do you got this week? This week, uh, I, I have a high-scoring game, and I only say high-scoring for us. Well, actually for them, because maybe they might catch up with us a little bit towards the end. I see this game a lot kind of like the Bears game we had, except now instead of us not executing in the second half, uh, it might create some opportunities for the Washington football team to catch up. But overall, though, I see a nice win, and for that reason... I got us. I got us at thirty-seven to thirty-one, and uh, wow, thirty-one yeah. points from the Washington Football Team. Yeah, I, I think I think they might be able to just rack up like a like a last-minute touchdown, more just like a uh, whatever. It's one minute. Uh, what you know, like okay, well, you know, that's that's not what we had in mind, but uh, whatever. It's it's a minute left. We we definitely won the game. Let's just take the win. Let's go back home, and. Uh, that's only because of my fear that they may sag off a little bit. Uh, if they don't do that, then I think we'll we'll still rack up that many points, but they won't be racking up too much like like That's us. Fair. And uh, I'll put them in the mid twenties. Ideally, I'm gonna say mid twenties, like you know that that like you know that uh, what do you call that 24, 25 range, or yeah, more honestly more like twenty four. It's gonna be like a thirty seven, twenty four kind of game, but. If we have been performing like we have in the past, especially with sometimes these random slow second half executions, you know we don't pee. We don't. We there's a lot of games we haven't been playing all four quarters, you know, hard. And uh, I mean, listen, you were saying you were salty because you know you don't want a slow start from us because we just had a bye week. Well, if you're salty and that happens, then I can't imagine how I'm gonna be feeling. And <laughs> As salty as I will be with a slow start, I will be a lot more salty if we sag off. I'm tired of just. I'm tired of these games. I want us to just be going full throttle for the rest of the season. I know if if, if that happens, injuries may pop up here and there, but I, I, I'm kind of more in the in, in the Todd Bowles mood now. No risky, no biscuit. It's time to just put it all out there, Stefan. Yeah, I agree. So that for that reason, I got thirty-one thirteen. Uh, Bucks, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, I, I wrote this before I, I heard the Godwin injury, so I was going to say our, our wide receivers are going to be too much. But that secondary, I still think they'll be too much because I do trust Tyler Johnson. I, I like both of our tight ends there, even though they're not crunk, they're not bad. And I love my boy Mike. So I'll say that offensively and defensively, I think we have enough film. I think we'll see a new, you know, I don't even want to say rejuvenate because he's young, but we'll see a new Devin White after this bye week. I think you know that conversation with Levante and you know this, you know getting fine and the embarrassment of last week is going to wake you know wake his butt up. So I'm going to go 31-13 bucks. Um, so I so so I have them covering there for for our betting fans. Um, and, and for our last segment, Musab, um, I'm going to go Mister so Mister Fantasy, uh, one of our favorite segments. I've uh, been two for two the last week. The bad week doesn't count, but I'm going to go with Mike Evans this week because I think that secondary can be had. And off a of bye week and Brady missing him a few times last time uh, versus Lattimore, I think he'll be looking for him early and often. So I'm going with Mike Evans. How about yourself? I got Mr. Regular Season or Playoff Season, Lenny. Uh, and I say that because of our random pop-up wide receiver temporary issue that we're dealing with right now. And if I'm if I'm Leonard Fournette, I'm thinking, all right, well, you know, we're we're dealing with some things like Chris Godwin maybe being questionable right now. Uh, Scooter's already out. AB's out. Uh, you know, you know, you know. Uh, as as a running back or as Leonard Fournette, when you find out that we just picked up Rashad Perriman, you're thinking, oh yikes. You know, like, you know, we made a move like that right now. And you're thinking, oh, sheesh, okay, well, this this obviously isn't looking good for our wide receiver unit if we're making moves like this right now. Uh, nothing against Perriman, but, you know, it's just he's in the practice squad. So for that reason, I got I got playoff Lenny as my fantasy player for this week. Listen, it'll be a bounce back game for him because he uh, did struggle a little bit last Absolutely. week. Absolutely. And I, and I think he's going to be the one who's going to be racking up some of those touchdowns uh, along with the others. But I think I think it's going to be spread out. You know, uh, 
I'm trying to be a lot more optimistic more than anything because we had the bye week, and I, I really think that we're going to be racking up a lot of touchdowns, and overall we'll be on the scoreboard for sure. Love that. Well, Musab, hopefully we go both two for two this week on fantasy. Hopefully we get the dove, start seven and two. Um, you know, we want to thank our listeners for tuning in today. It's been a great time. Um, we enjoyed our bye weeks, but we're ready for football again. Um, so, so that being said, if you could please follow us at, at RBLR Sports on, you know, all the major social media platforms, uh, we would really appreciate it as well as like and subscribe to the podcast in Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, and all the other major platforms. You know, Musab, I expect a big win this week. It, it was a frustrating one two weeks ago, so I expect a big one. Um, you know, get your beers ready, get everything ready. It's a, it's a one o'clock game. We're not used to this now in Tampa, which is kind of weird, but it is a one o'clock game. So I'll take it for what it is. And Musab, I'll leave you with the last word, my man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it from Stefan himself. It was, it was a hard week, but you survived. You survived the bye week. You survived a weekend without some Tampa Bay football. But now it's time to get back to business. It's time to chase down our next prey, the Washington football team. Now, I don't think we'll be able to give them any ideas for a mascot name. But what I do know, fans and listeners, is we are going to give them a nice loss on their schedule. All right, you know the drill. Get your favorite Buccaneers gear on. Fire up the grill. Bring some energy to the table wherever you are. And that being said, until next time, and as always, Go Bucks! Thank you for tuning into this presentation by RBLI Sports. On your way out of the stadium, please remember to like and subscribe.